Well, thank you for joining us, Chris. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Thanks a lot for having me. Um, and I guess this has been a season like no other, has it, with the, the number of games in a short period of time? Yes, 100%. Um, I think we, we started later finishing at the same point. So all the games are now more packed in a, in a shorter, shorter period. So what we've usually been used to have a congested period around Christmas is now the whole season almost. I think there are five or six weeks where you have um, Saturday, Saturday games uh, without a midweek fixture. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a new challenge. Um, I think every, everybody has to take some challenges um, in, in, these, in these times during these circumstances. And that, that's our, our challenge this season to, to deal with um, the amount of games in that period. But um, I must say it's a good challenge to have. Yeah. And have you had to take a different approach to recovery this season? Um, I wouldn't say a different approach, but um, just a more focused one. So obviously, um, with all the, the data we're using, all the, all the feedback of the players we're using, um, we obviously um, included already during the last season, um, the player maker technology into our training and protocols and um, they have also helped to just gain an extra percentage um, in how we evaluate um, our recovery processes and how we see the fatigue levels of our players. And it's, I wouldn't say we've had to find another approach. It's just a more focused way because recovery needs to take place much quicker and more often than it has been last season. Yeah. And what has Playmaker added? What has it enabled you to do that you couldn't maybe do before? Um, so, yeah, simple, simple things for having, having a great impact uh, in how we see and evaluate the training sessions is like that we now can get a gait analysis um, out of standardized drills um, performed during either warm up or, or within the session. So that we have now points within our um, training setup where we can get gate analysis of the players so where we can compare them for different um, timings throughout the whole season to just get another feedback um, if there are symmetries coming up um, if there's a change in step length um, ground contact time ratio um, flight time ratio so all that stuff where we could put another layer on um, looking at the performance of the players and the fatigue level of players um, is where they just, yeah, um, bring something extra to the game now. Yeah. And for people who maybe don't know, what does the gate analysis tell you? So literally, um, as the player maker units um, are sitting um, outside of every player's left and right foot, it, it gives us literally every single step the player is performing. And that's then, it gives us the ground contact um, time, the um, flight time, it gives us step length, it gives us ratios for the limbs um, and the symmetries or symmetries of, of their um, walking, running, sprinting performance. Um, and I feel that's just um, very valuable, um, not only these days, but in general. Yeah. And I think when we last spoke was before last season um, and you were talking about increasing the intensity um, for the Premier League because of the number of high intensity sprints, things like that. Um, have you had to ease off really because of the fixture congestion now? Um, no, I, I'm, I'm, um, I wouldn't say so. I think it's now, you know, the intensity, is le the intensity levels and... Um, how we um, approached it going into last season is now part of our game and we want to keep that up. We want to deliver the same um, intensities now, um, although we still want to dominate the ball and the game. And um, I think it's now more than ever going hand in hand and this is part of our game. Yeah, yeah. And how hard is it to come back down to the championship and then hit the ground running as you have? Because a lot of teams have struggled with that. Um, 
It's a very good question. Um, I think just me personally, I think mentally is probably or psychologically is probably the, the hardest turnaround to just, you know, getting settled again and, you know, find that motivation again as quick as possible to attack and don't get that blues off, you know, being relegated and you need that time to process it. Um, obviously, with um, how the season ended for us and with the short turnaround we had, we we had some processes in place uh, relatively early to engage our players again for the mission we have. And that obviously the disappointment settles quickly and we can attack it um, as soon as possible. And at this stage of the season, we must say, I think it, it worked well and hopefully it just will continue. Yeah. And is there anything different you would do in terms of physical performance and training if and when you go back to the Premier League, anything you learned from last time? I think the experience we made, um, no one can take away. And, and of course, with that overall around the experience we gained there, um, there might be small decisions being made different. But nonetheless, we want to perform in the manner with the style the club wants to perform and wants to represent this area. And, the community and what it stands for and this is how we go in there yes do we need to find um the fine margins um you know just to make another end scenario happen the next time yes probably um i'm, I'm pretty sure it will but what, what that will be that, that we will find out so yeah and how, how would you describe the kind of physical profile of the team what, what are you and the manager trying to get them to do physically on a match day? Um, so, yeah, we, I think first the philosophy of, of the manager is to um, yeah, control the game, um, have possession, playing attractive football, um, and be always um, on the wheel and the protagonist um, in that. Um, and what we, so me and my staff, um, want to deliver there is that our players have a high physical profile where they can, you know, um, drive that philosophy forward on the pitch. So with a lot of high intensity actions um, to just, you know, when the game got slowed down to speed it up again in the right timings to, to just yeah, be ahead of our opponent. Um, I think that's, but probably what every team wants to do um, at the end of the day, um, we just, yeah, try to do it our way. Yeah, fantastic. And will player maker continue to be an important part of what you do? Yeah, 100%, because as I said, not, not only from the, from the gate analysis, um, which gives us an extra bit now in our recovery um, evaluation, um, it also gives us um, technical data from our training sessions. So we can just profile our players on a, on a different level now with that piece of technology. So um, to just help them to find the next performance level, um, to see where are the gaps, uh, what are we expecting and what is actually happening. And, um, and, and therefore, um, they're, they're really good to work with. And I think that's how I see it, how, how also um, my staff in the office are seeing it. It's just probably the future of football also a little bit in that industry to, to get that data more frequently and to combine the technical and physical data um, in a much easier way. Um, at least this is what I hope so. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thanks so much for your time, Chris, and best of luck for the rest of the season. Yeah, thanks a lot. And again, thanks for having me and enjoy the rest of um, the conference.